So we'll start our next presentation. This time we're going into the formats and codecs uh, area. Um, uh, with our first uh, uh, speech is about Matroshka and the low latency streaming by Steve Lund. Give a warm, a warm welcome, please. Hello, so I'm Steve Lund. I created, not alone, uh, the Matroska. So for those who don't know, you might know the format MKV. Uh, so that was the other name for the format, the actual name. Um, so Matroska was created uh, as an open format from the beginning. For it. So it was developed mostly on the web with people who mostly never met each other. Uh, so mostly on IRC mailing, mailing list or the Doom 9 uh, forum. Uh, and it's mixing lots of technologies that were kind of emerging when it was created. So it, the idea was to replace AVI. There was org at the time, XML, Unicode, and Semantic Web, and we mixed all of this together to create the, the format. Uh, the, it was developed uh, in a way that's inspired by the, what was done on the web, so everything was open, everything was royalty-free. Uh, and the goal, the original goal, was to have a long-term storage format, something that would be usable for 10 years for when it was created in 2002. Uh, so in 2018, and it's still you, so we reached, uh, we reached that goal. And the other thing was to have low overhead because b since it's inspired by XML, it's very verbose. So we try to uh, remove as much verbosity as possible. Um, and also streaming friendly because uh, it was the, all, the design was... Uh, so it's the basis format for WebM, which was created by Google and Mozilla uh, a few years ago. And uh, so you all know it's also used as MKV. And there's also MKA for uh, files with only audio. Uh, there's also, um, right now, uh, ITF working group to, standard, to standardize uh, Matroska. Uh, it's called CLAR, so it stands for Codec Encoding for Lossless Archiving uh, and Real-Time Transmission. Uh, so the work group is working on eBML, which is the binary XML that Matroska is using. Matroska, which is now split in actually in three different documents now. Uh, that might be all, but at the time each project had about uh, 13 contributors, 300 commits, so mostly on documentation, uh, cleaning the documentation that existed and improving it. Uh, the, the project, uh, the work group started in 2015 and still ongoing and still a bit of work to be done until we have final RFCs for Matroska. Uh, the work group is also working on the standardization of FFV1, which is a lossless video format, and also FLAC, which I'm sure you all know. Um, so my talk today is talking about the latency in Matroska and how it can be used and how does it compare to other solutions. So first, to make sure we all talk about sa the same thing, the definition of latency I found on Wikipedia is latency is a time interval between the stimulation and response and or from a more general point of view, a time delay between the cause and the effect of some physical change in the system, system being observed. So basically here there's a diagram of what's happening when you actually do some, for example, live streaming of video and audio. So first you have, for video, you have frames which go into an encoder, then muxing, that means putting it in a format that can be, for example, m mixed with audio or, and also adding timestamps and stuff like that. 
um, then it goes through the network, and then the, on the other side, there's the demuxing, so to get the uh, encoded frames that go through the decoder, and then you get the frames. So each of these steps actually introduces a latency. I'm not going to talk about all kinds of latencies, for example, not the network, but uh, some that are more involved in what Matryoshka does. So, f for example, when you... Okay, that's supposed to be read. Um, so the video encoding latency, for example, usually you have frames one, two, three, four, etc., that come from the camera. Then it goes through the video encoder, and usually uh, when you have something pre-recorded, the codec can encode the frames in a different order than they are received to have better coding efficiency. But for live streaming, you don't want that. You don't want to have frames that appear very late compared to what they're supposed to do. So for uh, live streaming, you actually have to put your encoder in a mode that always send the pictures in the same order. Uh, so basically, live streaming is always a, a special case of encoding and uh, muxing and everything. It's not the general case of how more pe much, most people use a video uh, <coughs> usually, but it's growing since most people now watch p videos on YouTube or whatever, on new Facebook. And that's uh, increasingly going through the web and network, so that's becoming more and more important. Uh, so how does Matroska store uh, information? Uh, so that's the how, when you look at inside a Matroska file, you have a first a very small header, the metastic, which actually tells you where these parts are. So when you read here, you can all quickly go here if you want to. Then these parts are the actual audio and video uh, that you're going to read. Here it's for seeking if you want to go quickly to a place. If you have that information, you can go here. Uh, chapters, uh, like it's regular chapters, and tags for all metadata uh, to tag. To actually, you can tag this information, but also this information with tags from here. But in streaming, you actually don't have a lot of these parts. You only have the header and these parts. Uh, the meta stick, since you're not going to seek during live streaming, is useless. And the queues, you're not going to seek back, so it's useless as well. You cannot introduce chapters for the same reason you're, gonna, you're not going to seek in the file. The only one that could be used is tags that you would actually put before send the, the actual data. Uh, so WebM is actually exactly the same as Matroska. It just have at the beginning it says WebM instead of Matroska. Otherwise, it's the same thing with some feature uh, removed. So it's basically a Matroska profile. So the, in WebM live streaming, it would look exactly the same as in Matroska. Uh, but most people don't use actually live streaming this way. They actually use. Uh, adaptive streaming, so when you, your connection is better, you can have better quality, or your connection is bad, you have a lower quality uh, version. That's why when you do live streaming in Dash, which is one of the version of adaptive streaming, you actually have, for example, the audio can be split from the video, so you can have a better quality video with a lower quality audio. But it, the file actually looks the same. It's always still a header and a cluster for audio. And here it's still always a header and cluster for video. The only special thing is that the transition here, when you go to a better or lower quality of bandwidth, the boundaries here have to match always. And in all the versions of the same file with different qualities, so that's the that's actually what most you are using when you're watching YouTube or Netflix. That's the kind of technology they use. Um, so, but live streaming is even different uh, th because that's for even regular files that are already stored for a long time. But live streaming is actually uh, it has even more constraints. So live streaming is basically when you have the 
as little time between the, as we saw before the, uh, the definition of latency, it's as little time possible between the moment the frames are captured and the frames are received to the user. So you try to remove as much as possible stuff that you have. So basically, how does a Matroska file in live streaming, so basically a continuous stream of data coming, uh, not, it's not a file you're reading, but a stream. Um, so basically, this part is always there, and it's the same part. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So it's this part that we had here. It's always the same structure. Then you have your audio and video. So uh, I took an example of a file. Uh, and from fragmented MP4, and I redo it, did it in Matroska to see the, the difference. So the header on Matroska was 460 bytes big, and then each cluster has a header. We're going to see that after, and then the data. Uh, the header is 40, 25 bytes, uh, and then you have the data. So the extra data is here, and it's that much data. And for cr fragmented MP4, you ha also have a header and then the data. The, f the header is, was uh, 2,100 bytes, and uh, each the equivalent of a cluster in fragmented MP4. Uh, the overhead is for 850 and the data. So you can already see uh, Matroska is saving space. So that's in more detail what a cluster where you actually save the frame. When I say frame, it can actually be video or audio. It's exactly the same thing. So in each cluster, you have one time code for the cluster. And for each what's called block, you have a frame and a header. So each frame has a header that gi gives its timestamp and other stuff. So uh, basically, uh, before you start getting the first frame on a cluster, you have 25 bytes. And for fragmented MP4, the structure is a bit more complex. You have this atom, which consists of more atoms inside, uh, which is like 1K. And then the actual data, uh, where you have each frame. So you have to uh, get all this data before you actually get this frame. So there's. Uh, So here, what I call frame latency is how many, how much time or how much data, it's kind of the same, uh, do you need to actually get the end of the first frame that you can send to your decoder. So here, for a frame of 40K, you would have 40,025 40, bytes. Uh, before you actually can send it to the decoder. For fragmented MP4, you actually have to have this one kilo and then the 40,000. So uh, again, the latency is better in Matroska. Again, that's, that was a real life sample and uh, I died just transformed into Matroska to see the difference, but uh, it's the same. And the lower the bit rate, it actually, the bigger difference it <coughs> makes to use Matroska. Uh, so basically, here, the, uh, the other thing you have is buffer latency, because as you can see in, in Matroska, you send one frame after the other with its header. In a fragmented MP4, it's different. The header for each frame is actually stored at the beginning. So in terms of latency, before you get you get this, you need to know all the frames you're going to have in that whole big block. That means before you actually get frame one, you need to have all the frames and wait. So you, as we see, so earlier. So if you have blocks of two seconds in adaptive streaming, then that means you need to cache uh, two seconds of data before you actually can send it, because before you can write this data, you need to know all that stuff. So that's, for example, in that case, two second latency, where in the case of Matroska, it would be just that amount of data, so 25 bytes, and then the amount of the frame. In this case, it was 20 milliseconds. Um, 
And then, so we, we already see that Matroska has a big advantage here. The other format that's used a lot uh, in uh, tr uh, streaming, and that's actually the format that was used in Apple's adapting streaming format. They insisted on using TS, so, but now they changed uh, using fragmented MP4 as well. Um, so the same for one frame uh, in Matroska, how does it work in transport stream? So one frame is actually cut in 184 bytes, uh, and then there is each of these 184 bytes is encoded in 188 bytes. So each has a header. So four bytes header, then a part of the frame, then a header, a part of the frame, etc. So actually, to get the first frame, you actually have to get all the parts of the frame plus all the headers. In the case of the 40,000 uh, kilobytes frame, the overhead, the extra data you have to download compared to the same, uh, to get to the end of the same frame, is uh, 869 compared to the, so the 869 is the difference compared to the 25 bytes. So, so there's also less latency in Matroska that transport streaming. Uh, I'm actually I'm early. Uh, so basically we saw the difference between Matroska and uh, fragmented MP4. So the advantage of Matroska compared to this is a little kind of smaller uh, overhead uh, from the network. There's actually only uh, like uh, 400 bytes difference between the, the two formats, so it's not that much. But uh, for example, if you buffer two seconds in adaptive streaming, that's your latency that you're going to have it from empty MP4. Uh, but in Matroska, you don't have data you need to get to the end of the first frame is like uh, two or three percent of data. So that's data you could actually use for better encoding uh, in your codec. And, but, and this, the buffer latency, so the amount of data you need to get to the end of the first frame is the same compared to MP4 where you need to get the whole uh, let's say uh, 20 or 40 frames before you can actually start sending them. And uh, that's, uh, that's actually early, so I hope you have a lot of questions. And uh, I have some stickers uh, in my bag, and you can also go on the video land booth in uh, Building K. Uh, there's a wheel of uh, fortune. You can win lots of stuff. <coughs> and there's also some stickers there. And also, thank you. Jérôme. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you? How <laughs> fine. Uh, I have a presentation just after you, so yeah, I am a bit stressed. But before that, uh, I am curious about how you compute the cluster size uh, before sending the second and third frame. How do you, uh, do you know the size of the clusters when you need to write uh, this size uh, in the, B in the B stream? Uh, so I'm going to go back to show. Uh, Let's say here. Yes. So yeah, uh, yeah. As you said, so since it's inspired by XML, actually each element in EBML has a, an ID and the size of the data that it contains, and then the actual data. But in live streaming, there's a feature in Matroska and EBML actually that where you can actually tell. This element contain, contains data, but I don't know how much, so I'm not telling you the size, and you keep reading until you find the same uh, cluster <coughs> beginning, and then it's a different one. 
it's called, uh, there's different ways to call it, but usually we call it unknown length. And so you just send that to in your stream, even though uh, you don't know the size, you don't need to n wait until you know it, you just send it and too bad. And the, on the other side, the parser know it, it has to uh, handle that size. In that case, how do you know the in at which level of the matroska you are uh, at the block level or, or at the cluster level? It is with the, uh, the key of uh, matroska. It is a cluster, so it is well, this so level. So that's how IBM mail works. So to read an element, uh, the ID you have to uh, you have to actually know what what the parent is and then its parent, etc. So when you find uh, data that are not for this parent, you look in the other parent, see it for this parent, etc. And then you actually find that where it belongs. Okay, thank you. Another question? Oh, that's, okay, I'll start here and I have two in front. Uh, so MPEG-2 transport streams are able to be cut off at the, the 180 eight byte boundary, which means that if you've, uh, for contribution sources happening before what is distributed, you're able to, when you have multiple, say, streams for resiliency going into your final encode, you can just mix, mix and match if you've got network problems or other kinds of, say, encoder issues. Are you able or not able to do that with Matroska in a similar way, given no. the format? No. So I had two questions. Okay, so about live streaming, have be, there been thoughts about program metadata yet? What do you mean program uh, metadata? Such as EPG and things like that. Well, in the case of adaptive streaming, usually the metadata are not in the stream. It's, uh, it can be in the manifest, so... So in adaptive streaming, a manifest is actually an external file which uh, describes where to find these files. For example, with a general rule, they're not rewriting the file every time a new segment comes. And they can put all kinds of data in there. It's, it's not related to the actual data. Yes, but in case of a single stream, live stream. So yeah, like this, like I said earlier, no, you could actually put these tags. So tags, you can, like the author or the date it was produced, or you can put all kinds of stuff. You could actually put it here. And because it's a live stream, you could actually put it here and here, and you can uh, add a new one during the streaming to actually change the data. Well, like if you play a song and then the song changes, then you have new metadata that you can introduce in the middle. Uh, it's, it actually exists for MP3 streaming and you get ID3, or I don't remember the format, in the middle of the stream that you have to pass, and then you get the new song that's playing. It could be also done uh, the same way with Matroska. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I feel that you are mixing explanation on file format and what you put on the wire for doing the streaming and you, you are comparing fragmented MPEG-4 which is a file format with the streaming which is maybe HLS or, or Dash, whatever and why don't you compare to the other ways people are doing low latency streaming like RTP or, frag or uh, MGPEG which are the low latency and solution nowadays. Oh. Well, since ever. Okay. Uh, c compared to RTP, RTP is a network thing. And usually, they actually, well, there's all kinds of formats for RTP, but usually there's not even a container. Well, that would be a Matroska in this case. And what I'm talking about here is uh, actually either files for adapting streaming because but that file you can still write on the server while people uh, read it which is cannot be done in a fragmented mp4 that's 
That's why it's mixed between file format and streaming format, because in the case of Matroska, it can be both. In the case of fragmented MP4, it cannot. But compared to RTP, uh, it, I mean, it's not the same goal. You, you can probably, and you do get better latency with RTP, but then it, it, you, get, you don't scale that well, or you have other issues, and that's why people on the web at least uh, they're not using that because that's not how their technology works. But for example, RTP is used, uh, for example, if you have Twitch or other stuff, I think Twitter, Live, uh, the client is actually sending to their server in RTP format. Uh, but then for distribution, that's not a good format for them. They need something else. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome.